those of you who are newer to Rocket League, you've probably noticed something rather intimidating. For some reason, people are flying all over the place. There's going to come a time when you need to start actually going for aerials. Well, there are loads of videos out there on how to aerial, so I'm not actually going to go over that in this video. Plus, we just released an entire course on Gamers Ready with Rocket League YouTuber Seabell, literally going over every aspect of mastering the aerial. So if you guys want, go to the link in the description below to check out that course and check it out. It's pretty amazing. I can say that because I got basically access to the entire thing while we were building it. No, this video is going to give you some inside tips, some secrets to the aerialing trade that I've learned over the years, especially some things I've learned recently. So if you were to come to apprentice with me to sort of learn the ins and outs of aerials at a high level, these are some of the things that I would tell you. So without further ado, let's jump into five tips for improving your aerial game right now. Okay, number five, start predicting. Now this is really huge. A good chunk of the time you'll be required to get up into the air and go for an aerial when the ball is actually changing directions. Usually this is the ball flying off of a sidewall or a back wall or even the ceiling. And honestly, a key part of math Mastering this will come from the final thing that we're going to talk about in this video. So make sure to stick around for how you can actually like really master predicting aerial shots. But the first step is just really being willing to mess up. The same as when you first learn how to do aerials, like you just gotta go for it. And the same is true in predicting shots that are a little bit difficult. I've also linked the training pack that you're watching right now if you guys want to work on this. So here's the scenario. Let's say the ball flies really quickly at the ceiling in front of or you know, somewhat in front of your opponent's net, and you really have two options, as with any aerial opportunity. You can wait until you're comfortable going for the ball and you know you can hit it solidly. In this case, you know, let it hit the ceiling, let it start its downward trajectory, and then go for your aerial. Or you can jump right away before it's even hit the ceiling and give yourself a much better chance at beating your opponent to the ball. Like I said, this is true of players who haven't mastered basic aerials. You have the easier but less effective option of waiting until you're comfortable, and also the more risky option of just going for it early and trying to predict where it's gonna be. The same is true when the ball is heading for the wall. It's better to get in those reps where you predict where the ball is going to go and risk messing up than just sitting around forever and never going for difficult shots. Same is true of the backboard. Just get up there quick. Go for it fast when you see the ball's heading at the backboard and see if you can predict it. And if you mess up, like, it's all good. Again, we'll learn a little bit more how this can be done in a less risky manner when we get to the last thing, but for now, just start going for them. All right, the next one on our list is somewhat related to mentality, but it really does matter. When you're going for an aerial, often you think of yourself as hitting the ball, and that's sort of the last step of the aerial. And it is true, you are hitting the ball with your car, much like you're hitting a ball with your foot in soccer, a bat in something like baseball, a club in golf, or you know, a wooden oar thing in cricket. I don't even know what they call that thing. But the key to really generating power and just having the right feel and momentum in sports is to imagine yourself actually swinging whatever object you know a bat or a foot or whatever actually through the ball this will help you obviously hit the ball harder but it's also gonna help with your overall form and position obviously sometimes you'll want to go for a softer hit but it still applies you'll set yourself up for that hit with sort of your flying trajectory and then on some level really try to go through the ball in golf there's a problem that people talk about a lot called deceleration and this usually relates to putting but basically you know a player will have a backstroke on their putt and it'll be too big and too too quick and they'll try to slow down when they hit the ball and basically it's why it's called deceleration and the gist of it is this does not work you want to be having the power be at the end of your shot the same is true in rock league you want to be moving through the ball with speed not like really trying to back off okay next we have a somewhat advanced tip and this is to start thinking about how you can turn specific aerials into double touches this is something i've been doing quite a bit lately and obviously it's going to be tough if you've never really practiced double touches but oftentimes the best way to beat a single defender on aerials is to just turn that aerial into a little double touch. So let's say there's one person left in goal, they're not sitting up on the backboard. If you just bang it off the backboard and dunk it in, there's not a lot that they can do. Obviously turning it into a pass is also a great option, but you'll know when the time comes you know, when you have an opportunity to just bang the ball off the backboard and go for a double touch. It's best to practice this really on any aerial training, as, you know, any aerial can pretty much be turned into a backboard shot. All right, if you haven't begun to experiment with air rolling on your aerials, it's probably time. It's hard to really explain which types of specific air rolls are best for which shots, and it really isn't a science. It's one of those things, as you begin to master control of your car in the air, you'll start to automatically make your air rolls basically, you know, catered to what you're doing. 
the key to mastering air roll is really to master car control in the air. And the way to do that is to start by learning how to fly upside down. As this has been said many times, obviously your controls are now backwards, which makes it quite difficult. And it's gonna take a lot of time to master this, but start with flying upside down and then implementing upside down flight into your shots. Maybe you have a really high aerial shot that you just wanna poke downwards. Flip your car upside down, you'll have a much better chance of pulling that off. Then begin to master flying sideways and freestyling. And that will just sort of make it so you understand your car and what it can do. Air rolling can really give you an extra level of precision when placing aerial shots, as well as setting up double touches and passes. All right, the last thing and arguably the most important is something that I've been doing relatively recently. And I'm not sure this has ever really been talked about, but on many of my aerials, I've started to basically think of my aerial as a two-step process, or at least that's how it feels. So let me explain this. So the first stage is what I call the setup stage. And then the second stage is the execution stage. And this really helps add a little bit of precision on your shots. So when you first learn how to hit aerials, you sort of just boost and fly straight at the ball without really letting off the boost. And you know, you sort of are just like making adjustments while you're flying, but you really just get that one chance of just flying at the ball, sort of like a rocket. And you know, I still do this. This is obviously one way to do aerials and you need to do this when you're trying to beat someone to the ball. But when I have basically an open shot, nobody else is really trying to challenge me and I have that opportunity to hit a really hard, solid aerial at the top corners. Here's how I do it. I boost myself up in the air, sort of recognize that I have that space, and then I use that first level of boost and flying to get myself into a good position to then do the next stage, which is the execution. I then stop boosting for a little bit, maneuver my car to where I want it to be, and boost in and through the ball. So you boost up into that high position where you're ready to do basically any shot, and then you, you boost into the ball after making a slight adjustment. So you boost and fly, and then boost and fly again. This really does work for me when I'm wanting to have that extra level of precision and power on my shots. It really, really helps. Give it a try, guys. Obviously not for every single aerial, but this also really works when you're predicting shots, as we talked about in the first point, when the ball's flying off the ceiling. Just get up in the air. Just get up somewhere. Like, you don't have to be perfectly, like, flying straight where you need to be. Just get up in the air, and then as the ball's moving, make that little adjustment when it comes off the ceiling or off the backboard to hit the next shot. Also, again, it works really good for backboard shots. Get your car up in the air and then make an adjustment. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and hopefully you can begin implementing these things. Again, check out Seabell's course on aerials if you guys are interested in going further into this. It's really, really good. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.